Excellent! What's up guys, welcome to my monthly builds video for September 2016. Each month I create a couple computer build parts lists based on your votes and feedback from the previous month. So last month I did a straw poll, everybody voted about what builds they wanted to see this month, and look what won. 4-Way GTX Titan X Pascal, Just Cause. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. I also did the second uh, runner-up, the $500 basic bang for the buck back to the school build. So those are the two builds we're going to be seeing. And if you want to vote for next month for October, uh, the link is down in the description. I'm going to do a mid to high-end $1,500 gaming PC with Windows. If you're noticing noises going on in the background, that's Hero. He's, he's stretching out and relaxing. Uh, spooky Halloween theme build, dual system living room build. Anyway, uh, check those out and vote if you want to see one or one or more of them. Anyway, before I move on to the David and Goliath systems from this month, I wanted to also point out that back in July, I started actually building one of these systems every month. Uh, I have actually not yet built the 3500 system uh, that I teased for August, mainly because Corsair asked if I wanted to build in a new case I'm trying. Well, Hero moved into a really inconvenient position. Hero, you're in the way. I'm sorry, can you, can you scooch over just a little bit? All right, now you're coming over here to say hello. Yes, you're the cutest. No more, no build videos. We'll just give you pets. Good boy. Stay. Wow. Anyway, though, Corsair asked if I wanted to build it in a new case. That's right here. This is the Air 740 from Corsair. It is also a cube style case. Uh, it is brand new, uh, but it's very similar to the Air 540 that I had chosen for last month's build, so I'm going to be building in that, and that will be in the next couple days. Actually, I'm probably going to do that live tomorrow uh, if everything goes according to, to plan, so uh, I'll be tweeting about that, so follow me at Paul Hardware on Twitter if you want to check that out. But anyway, uh, back to my monthly build. So I've been doing this for quite some time, actually. I have my whole history right here, going to back to all of my builds. But these are the two for this month. Again, the Goliath $15,000 build, and then a much, much, much more reasonable $500 build. We'll start off with the $500 build right here. By the way, I'm using PC Part Picker for all these, so those links will be in the description, as well as individual links to all the products used. This is actually a less than $500 build. Came out to $471.90 with shipping on PC Part Picker. Starting off with an i3-6100, 3.7 gigahertz uh, dual core CPU, available for around $110 to $115. And uh, this is a dual core and it is a lower end Skylake CPU, but it does still have very good in instructions per clock. It's got a really nice uh, out of the box uh, frequency, 3.7 gigahertz. And if I didn't already mention it, it does have hyper threading. So it will give you four threads so it can fool some games that require four cores into thinking you actually have four cores even though you might not. Now my original intent with this system was to make the entire thing upgradable so that you could add a bit more money later on, but uh, I kept coming up against these choices of budget versus slightly more money for a little bit more upgradable thing, and I eventually just decided to go all budget. So for example, with the motherboard, it's a B150 chipset, so upgrading to an unlocked processor isn't really gonna, I mean, you could, but you don't really want to. You could still upgrade the processor, you just won't be able to overclock in the future, but 60 bucks for that is a really good price for you know a nice little micro ATX motherboard. I've used a similar motherboard to this in builds in the past, Again, it'll just kind of get the job done. It is lacking in some features, so you've only got two DIMM slots, for example. So you're, I only did a single stick of memory, so you can still expand the memory. There's only a single fan header, so you'll want to keep that in mind as well. Just make sure you get a splitter or uh, something to use if you need to plug in all your case fan headers. And no M.2 or anything fancy, but upshot is it's going to get the job done, and it's only 60 bucks uh, For memory, I just went with a single stick of G-Skill Aegis 8 gig. Uh, this is only $34. Uh, this was this was a dollar or two more than a comparable green PCB stick. So I did sp I did spend a little bit mo more money so that I wouldn't have a green PCB component in there. But again, this will get the job done. And I went with a single stick because eight gigs I feel like is a good jumping off point for a gaming PC. And you can just drop in a second stick for another thirty four dollars in the future if you want to. Uh, for the SSD. And yes, I only included an SSD in here. It's 240 gigs, and if you're worried about not having enough space, my assumption is always that people have an old hard drive, a one or two terabyte hard drive lying around somewhere that they can use. Um, and I'd much rather have the fast SSD working. Even with 240 gigs, you can it's operable for a while if you don't have additional storage. And this 8801 just keeps being the best price option out there. It's not the fastest 2.5 inch SATA SSD. I keep saying the same thing every time, but it is only 58. $59 at NCIX right now for a 240 gig version. And then finally for the graphics card, I went with the Gigabyte Radeon RX 460. This is the four gig version, not the two gig version. I wanted that extra 
extra horsepower in there. Uh, but it's got a nice design. It's orange and black. Uh, it's not the you know crazy well built or anything like that. But it is an RX 460, so you know bear that in mind. $130 ish for this one. And if I was going to take a single component in this build and upgrade it, I wanted to do an RX 470 in here originally, but that is about 60 bucks more. So that pushed the price up to more like 530. But uh, consider that as a serious option if you really are seriously looking at building this system. Uh, oh, I said finally, but I'm not, I'm not done yet. <laughs> Fractal design core 1100 is the case micro ATX mini tower again gets the job done. It's only about 40 bucks. Uh, this is the 1100, not the 1000. You know, nothing too special, but it'll it'll get you up and running. Uh, finally, for power supply, EVGA 450 watt, 80 plus bronze. Uh, there's other options down in this range from uh, like Corsair and Rosewell even, um, but I just keep going with the EVGA power supplies. This one does not have uh, all black cabling or anything like that, uh, but it's 450 watts, perfectly adequate for this build, and it is only $37. There are some other options uh, that were out there from EVGA and a couple more for 10 to $20 more that have a little bit better aesthetics and all black cables and that kind of thing. But again, just trying to get things running. So that is the first build, only a little over $470. Let me know what you guys think of it. And let's move on to the second build, which is the Big Daddy. This is $15,000 or rounded up. It actually costs $1,480.69. 1, sorry, $14,830.69. So you can round that up. Or, you know, since this really is only the price for the case, and I did have windows in there, um, you know, use that extra $170 to get yourself a monitor and peripherals that will totally match with everything else here. So I wanted to do something more than just going sort by highest price for every single component and throwing it all in there to make the most expensive. This is, believe it or not, somewhat reasonable. Somewhat. That is... Probably not exactly accurate, but I tried to not just be like, here's the most expensive things. All right, so obviously the uh, CPU is gonna be the i7-6950X. Yes, you could go slightly cheaper and get yourself like a 6900, but then you wouldn't have 10 cores. Or you could go the Xeon route. I cannot go and talk about this without mentioning the possibility of getting a crazy high core count Xeon, but you won't be able to overclock those. They won't have quite as good instructions per clock, and really I, I, the, there's just no way around the 6950X. Plus, only $1,650, that's $50 less than it launched at for $1,700. It's a, it's a deal now. Uh, for cooling, of course, we have a Corsair H110i. If I was being honest with myself and building a 15 grand system, I would probably do a custom loop for it, but that's a little bit too complicated for this type of uh, video. So the H110i will get the job done and it has RGB lighting. In, or no, it's just at least got inserts so you can change the color of it to match a little bit better. Uh, for the motherboard, this one I was actually a little, I, there are quite a few really high-end motherboards for X99 that cost five or $600 each. This is the Asus X99E WS or workstation, and it is really expensive. Uh, costs in the $700 range right now. Although honestly, I think this is a jacked up price because it's also over on Newegg for just over $500. It's even in stock and everything. So I'm not really sure what the deal is here. Just don't buy this on Amazon if you see it. But basically what you have here is an SSI CEB motherboard. So that is a server specification for the actual layout. Um, but don't worry, the case I chose will fit it. Uh, this is not a new generation X99 board. This came out back when the uh, first generation Haswell E's came out. So as a result, you do have an M.2 slot, which is kind of up there in the upper right, which you put here, let me click on this thing. Uh, you, you'd have an M.2. Oh God, it rotated the motherboard. I'm so confused. M.2 is like right here. Um, and you've got, of course, four-way SLI support. Uh, the thing that this really has, and the reason I chose it, is dual PLX bridges. Uh, because from the CPU, you have 40 lanes with a Haswell E or Broadwell E CPU. And that's not enough. Because if you're putting four-way Titan X Pascals in all four of your slots, then you're using up 32 PCIe lanes right there, just with your graphics card, not including any peripherals or additional storage or anything else you might add. So I wanted to have as much bandwidth via the PCIe lanes as possible. This is really the on only way to go about it. Uh, besides that, it's a really nice looking board. It overclocks, it's, it's, it's a really solid board. I mean, all around, I don't have too much more to say about that. Um, but anyway, let's move on to the next thing, which is uh, memory, 128 gig kit should again obviously be the obvious solution for this. You're not gonna put anything less than the max in there. Here I did save some money though by going with the Vengeance LPX memory kit. Um, Corsair does, does have their um, 
Dominator memory, which was a good 200 bucks more than this kit. However, the Dominator memory wasn't available. This is faster. This is 3000 speed. The Dominator kit was 2666 or 2800, I think. Anyway, it's all black. It'll blend in right just just nicely and it's not as tall too. So, and it's cheaper. This was again 700 and something versus the Dominators, which I think they might even have been close up to 1000. So, at this point, we have gotten this far down the list. We've gotten through the first four items and we've included Oh, about $1,800 for the CPU and cooler, another $500 or $700 depending on where you buy it for the motherboard, and then another $750-ish for the memory. Uh, this is all the storage here, so you'll notice uh, a M.2 SSD, four more SSDs, four hard drives, and then of course you got the video cards and the other stuff down there. So let's continue on with the actual storage. Uh, I wanted the fastest and most capacity-rich uh, M.2 SSD that I could find, and the OCZ RD400, a uh, pretty new SSD in this range, is one terabyte and M.2. It doesn't have the nicest PCB. Yeah, uh, that's kind of turquoise, but it will be covered up by um, the fourth uh, Titan X Pascal. So don't worry about too much too much about this not blending in. But one terabyte on a single M.2 stick, that's pretty freaking impressive if you ask me. And it definitely has very good speeds as well. 2600 megabytes per second uh, sequential reads, 1550 megabytes per second sequential writes, crazy IOPS as well. So that'll that'll do you nice for like a boot drive and for quite a few games on it as well. Now here's another place where I saved you some money. If you wanted to go with the very most expensive SSD you can buy right now, it's a four terabytes Samsung 850 Pro, I'm um, sorry, 850 Evo. Those cost $1,500 each though. And since I was doing four of them, I decided maybe let's save some money, get something slightly more reasonable. So this is the two terabyte Samsung 850 Pro, a much more reasonable cost of around $800 each. And of course I did four of them, giving your, you eight terabytes of uh, presumably RAID 0 storage, which would be probably even faster than that uh, OCZ drive that I put in there. Anyway, uh, finally, of course, we got to have the mass storage. So 10 terabyte drives is about the biggest you can get. Went with four of these Seagate Iron Wolf 10 terabyte 3.5 inch 7200 RPM drives. These are made for RAID. Uh, I would, if I had four of these, it's 40 terabytes of storage. I'd probably put it in RAID 5, giving myself 30 terabytes usable plus one drive for failover. Um, of course, you could do like RAID 10 though or something like that as well. But I did want to double check that this would all can be able to connect to the motherboard though. So you got your M.2 right here. And then basically you have actually 10 SATA ports uh, via the X99 chipset. So four of them for the SSDs and four of them for the uh, those those mechanical drives and you're good to go. Um, let's move along to the l final couple things. One of them is of course going to be the graphics cards. I feel like this is the most boring part because it was kind of the given. Titan X Pascal Edition. These are $1,200 each and you can only buy them directly from Nvidia right now. So uh, also your limitations here on actually assembling this is that you can only buy two at a time from Nvidia. So you'll have to get a friend to buy the other two. You have to lend him $2,400 as well. And for the case, I went for Case Labs. I went directly to their website because they're not listed on PC Part Picker. The Magnum TH10A is $590, and you can customize it and stuff like that if you want things to get fancier. Uh, case Labs, I don't, I've never actually used a Case Labs case or built in one. I've only uh, checked out J's and everything, but they're insanely both expensive, but also worth the money when it comes to how well built they are and everything like that. Uh, this one is, is available in gray, and it's just got tons of space and a bunch of different orientation options for the motherboard and all of that good stuff. So um, here, as well as with those, uh, th those, those graphics cards, is where you will also need to um, take some extra care when ordering because due to heavy demand, custom orders are temporarily suspended until after, I guess after July 31st. That should work for now. Everyone go order Case Labs cases. Uh, all right, power supply is EVGA Supernova T2, 1600 watt. No, I'm not paid by EVGA to use all their power supplies. I actually had the Corsair AX 1500i in here, which is also 80 plus titanium, um, but it was 1500 watts. And when I looked at my actual parts list, which has gotten buried in here among my tabs again, when I looked at it, uh, it's 1051 watts recommended, and that is not including two of the Titan X GPUs because I had to write in two of them right here because uh, PC Part Picker wouldn't let me add more than two of them at a time. So yeah, I figured just to be on the safe side, we'll go with 1600 watts. Uh, again, it is 80 plus titanium rated, all black cables. It's going to look nice, etc., etc. All right, got a Blu-ray burner in there just just because I'm trolling and you know, got to throw in everything but the kitchen sink. And finally, I even included a $30 uh, ration for buying Windows 10 on Kingwin, because why would you buy Windows 10 anywhere else? 
unless you want to pay 100 bucks plus for it. So there it is, guys. My $15,000 four-way Titan X build. This is, I guess, kind of what I would do if I really was being forced to build a Titan X four-way system. Again, there's a lot of impracticalities in there. There's a lot of things you could say as far as aesthetics or like custom water cooling or anything like that. But if you got lots and lots of money and price is no object and you need the best of the best, I would put this system up against lots of other ones as far as just being absolutely crazy. And we've even seen 4-Way Titan X used in gaming recently with the, uh, the video we talked about in the live show this week. But guys, let me know if you enjoyed this video. Hit the thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Again, links to everything is down in the description, whether you want to vote in the straw polls or click on the links to any of these products I've been talking about, or just leave me a comment to let me know how wrong I was about these parts or how right I was, or just that you're looking forward to all my upcoming content this month. That'd be cool too. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you next time.